Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of FS Passengers with me and you heard 37. So we're here in Toronto. Like I said, I kind of wish it had been better coming in, but uh, it's so hard to run and everything. I didn't have uh, the lights on. I thought, you know, it does pretty much look better during the daytime, so that's what we got. And today we're going to be going to Duluth. I just got a message earlier on uh, YouTube asking if I could go to like somewhere around Duluth. So that's where we are going to go. We're going to go to Sky Harbor Airport in Duluth. It's a smaller airport. Um, it's literally like right on the water. In fact, they have some uh, water runways and a short uh, paved runway. So that's where we're going to go today. Also, you'll notice, you see how bright it is? I kind of experiment. They got the E&B series and I've used it before. Uh, they had a problem with some planes. I'm not sure if it was, I think I used it around the Captain Sim 707 maybe? I remember it would cause problems sometimes, so... By I put it back in, you can see it. it does brighten things up. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Sometimes it's almost too bright. Like if you look at the the wing, it's like so bright. I don't know. The sky does look pretty daggone nice. Alright, but anyhow, let's go up to FS Passion and we'll get this thing going. Eight out of uh, ten passengers. We're going to go 100% fuel. Whoops, <laughs> it's current load. It's Captain S or Flight Sim Commander had it like 555 miles, uh, so it'll probably be a little bit longer than that, because that seems to be how it goes. Uh, and then we'll probably since we're flying out to the west, I'm a little afraid we're gonna. Uh, you can't. Let's see. We'll go with that. Uh, the flight to the west will probably go in, into the wind and everything. So I want to get as uh, much distance as we could. Alright, max range, maybe I should say. KDYT, Sky Harbor, Duluth. Destination set. Okay, we'll load Engine immediately, show the passengers, make sure we got them. Check set. There we go. Check front. We should have way more than enough fuel, by the way. This thing has a better range than that, but I just want to make sure. Because I know Toronto, it seems like we were getting a little close. But ended up having plenty of rainbow fuel. Um, let's go over here. Put that on main. I, I don't know why it's flashing. It usually doesn't do that. I wonder if it'll do that when that green thing disappears. Probably not. Probably it still will, actually. All right, so the battery comes on. Left alternator. Turn on the mags, hit our nav light. Left fuel pump. I did not bring these up. All right, so the starter. There we go. Turn off that fuel pump, right alternator. Mags, right fuel pump. There, start it up. Move that all the way up. Band, right. Fuel pump goes off. Alright, stall heat, pedo heat, avionics bus. I'll turn on the anti ice while we're on the ground. I don't know why it flashes like that. That's kind of odd. I had noticed it until then. I was flying with it a lot yesterday over in Zurich. Been making a video of uh, Moscow to Zurich. I'm gonna try and get done an MD 11. And it wasn't doing that at all. It's kind of odd. So we'll hit up the ground. We're gonna be going more to the west, just kind of northwest. Off Tango Alpha Sierra Kilo West India. Request taxi for takeoff west departure. Cessna Golf Tango Alpha Sierra Kilo Taxi to and hold short of runway six left via taxiway six Tango left. Charlie, Lima Alpha November Echo One Victor Mike Delta Contact Tower on one one eight point seven when ready. All right, we'll go ahead and acknowledge taxi that, and, and then we'll bring on the progressive taxi. Using taxiway Tango Charlie Lima Alpha I'm gonna go ahead and Echo hit this. One, Victor Mike Delta Cessna Alpha Sierra Kilo. GPS. Well, I remember 
Man, I really hate how that view goes straight down. I gotta remember to change that. All right, the taxi light comes on. All right. Score one. Find our own way. Caution, this is RDA F8 on the taxiway. Four one two. Continue taxi. Roger. Four one two. Oh, she's gonna take a lot of thrust apparently to get going. That gone. I was just kind of sitting there waiting. It just wasn't going. Come on, man. You just got us going, dude. I'm wondering if we keep going because that happens sometimes. Uh, if we just keep going, I'll just come back and say keep going. Because usually other traffic means uh, like trucks and stuff like that. It's not usually a plane. By the way, I've got World of AI back installed, and I literally, I went and I downloaded every single package that they had of current airlines and cargo airlines. So hopefully there's a bunch more planes, because I before, I only had some of them. And then lately I've had none when I reinstalled my computer, and now I literally, like I said, I downloaded every single package I could, that they had. Yeah, see? It's ridiculous. Roger, Alpha Sierra Kilo. So there should be tons of AI planes. Hopefully that doesn't kill the frame rate. Like I said, the heart the scenery is hard enough to run as it is. I put it back to hundred percent traffic. Uh, I can't remember what general aviation is said. I, it might be a hundred as well. I can't because I remember I wanted to up that a bit. Road traffic is at 40%. Uh, so there's always that too. Cause that, that'll that hurt your frame rate a lot too, especially in an area like this, I'm afraid. You can see it's a little jagged. Yeah, we're getting 21, 13, 19, 14. So it's actually it's easier to run it with a plane like this. You can imagine when we try to run it with like a 747 or a PMDG or something like that. It takes a lot more intense or a 777. So much more intense. I wonder if we could run Montreal because I want to come back east after this. Because uh, Montreal, I've tried that near Holler videos and that's really hard. But we always fly that obviously with huge planes. So maybe FS Passenger, we could do Montreal. I don't know why Montreal is so difficult. It's made by the same company, Fly Tampa, I do believe. And, uh, I mean, Montreal, I remember last time I tried to run it, I had to save it because it crashed in air hauler as I was approaching. And I've had, I tried to do a video out of there once and I couldn't even get to the runway without it crashing. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what the heck the thing is. But maybe with a plane like this, maybe we could actually get it done. It's easier to run. Coming and going. Until he was going. Yeah, he's going. Several of us over here. They did say six left. I don't know if this is left or not. Probably, I would imagine. Of course, we're not supposed to be here. Small aviation plane like us. I'll slow down. There's no real reason to hurry up, because obviously we're going to be waiting. Or are, all right, so they taxing us behind those guys? Or are we? We're not going on the other. Couldn't be going on the other side. Man, there's four planes up there. There's that five. I think there's four. I got one guy's taking off. I was wondering why he was waiting. I was like, man, don't tell me someone's coming in as well. There's so much lagginess on the turns and stuff. Yeah, down to 12 at times. It's, it's a huge fluctuation, except now 18, 19. She wouldn't expect to be so bad. Yeah, there was five, because there's four now. It's so cool with the planes, though. 
That's why we won't fly to so many large airports. I guess Air Canada. I can't tell who those two are. That's Air Canada as well, right? Oh. No, it's not. Is it? It's not Air Canada. It's got the maple leaf, unless that's a different kind of library. I don't think it is. surf wing I've never I guess that's real I would go here but might as well follow Toronto them and it takes a lot of thrust to get this thing going today They're so heavy I don't want to get too close in real life, you wouldn't want to get closely blowers right off the freaking thing. Is there anyone behind us, though? Nope. So we're not holding anyone up. There you go. I wish you could hear him like throttling up or whatever. Hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. Is that a triple seven right ahead of us? Yeah, air can it looks like an awfully large plane. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Blowing stuff right at me. I can't see. Alright, here we go. God, it is like blowing stuff right at me. Another reason I guess you don't want to get close. Like that looks like this Air Canada looks a lot larger than that. That looks like it'd be either a triple seven or an Airbus or something. I I have a hard time telling. That look that plane looked really huge from the side. Hit up the tower. It's good that it's not there yet because I would probably holler and they would probably. If it would have been before him, they would have given me the go ahead or something. Alright, I guess he had already asked. We wouldn't have known because we weren't listening. Well, he's not blowing stuff on us now. It's just 730 second, really? It seems so large. Especially the the height of the, the fuselage. I guess it doesn't look that long. It's just the circumference of the fuselage or whatever. But yeah, it do, now that I think about it, the length of it doesn't really matter. I guess we just came a little late because there's nobody behind us. By the way, I'll, I'll say it because they're going to be talking to me. Yeah. Anti collision lights come on, landing lights come on, taxi into position and hold. By the way, it's 555 miles, which is exactly what Flight Sim Commander said, so it got one right. <laughs> For the first time in a long time. It's such a good program, though. It's just... It has weird things like that, where it just can't get stuff right. Air Canada 304. Contact Toronto departure. Actually, I was lying up to the yellow line for some reason. White line. Point, 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 
pipes are coming out. Almost forgot about that. Check everything. That's why you check things. I fail that so many times. Did fail it today. Let's get on out of here. Power is set, airspeed is alive. A little harder to get her centered up when it's kind of jagged. Really push her left. 80 knots. Toronto. Look at all the Air Canada planes. I'm gonna go ahead and retract the flaps. Nose down just a little bit. I want to pick up some more airspeed. Since we're fully loaded, although we're usually fully loaded because of the luggage, baggage. to trim it down a tad bit. There it comes down. Autopilot, nav. Let's check out the vertical speed, make sure it stays around there. That's good. Come outside, look around. Still a little jagged. Ah, getting a little too far out to move. You see all that. It's so hard to run that scenery. Which is a shame. I mean, it's so freaking beautiful. I forgot I was going to say something, but I remember I didn't because I was going to say it. When we were getting onto the runway, now I can't remember. Oh, weather. I shut down uh, Opus, I was going to put the flight plane in, but when I went to go start it, she kept refusing to open. It does that on occasion, usually after you close it a bunch. Let's pick a small airport real quick. There, now we won't have to listen to anything. But it refused to open, so I uh, chose a theme, and I chose a Orbex, it's theme 4 I believe. And I, I truly love it. There's, I was using this yesterday. In fact, there's so many clouds and everything. I think it absolutely looks superb, especially with the E and B series. See how, I don't know which would be more appropriate. There's it without, there's with it all. Sometimes the whites just appear a little too white for me. But a lot of people do like the effect. I, I think it's all right. Like I said, I've tried it before. I thought I'd try it again. It hasn't crashed it yet, so hopefully that stays like that. But I think Orbex, that uh, theme four, I love all the clouds. I've used three a lot before, but I tried four today. I really like tried it the other day as well. Just really like how many clouds there. I think it puts in. I think it looks really nice. So I'm not sure what about wind. Because I don't think yeah, this plane doesn't even tell you the wind. But I had planned also to go to 8,500 feet. So that's where we're going to be going today. So we're coming up on 4,000. What is the desired track anyway? 305. Oh, I had it. Missed it by one. Makes it a little hard to see that. 95%. Let's see how long it says from here. 
341, so probably closer to three hours or so when we get up to speed. And we're at 4,500 feet. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, speed this thing up to 4X. Let's take one look outside again. See the frame rate's still only 1921. What the hell? We're not anywhere near Toronto looking at it. I do believe downtown Toronto, we took off basically going away from it, if I remember correctly. But uh, anyhow, we're 5,000 feet. Let's go ahead and speed it up. Be back in just a bit.
right, everybody, slowing it down. We're 27 miles out. Let's go ahead and uh, holler at them on the radio. It's probably not a tower, I would imagine. There could be, but I don't think so. KDYT Sky Harbor. Yep, just the traffic. Select a runway for our landing, 14 and 32. 32 it is. Not quite straight in. Okay, we'll do a full stop landing, and that's our position. So, to come in, I'm going to go out to the left a little bit. Come down, we're at 6,000 feet now. I'm going to increase our rate of descent. Back on the thrust just a little bit. 23 miles out now. We have a ton of fuel, by the way. We have used like maybe half. I wish I wouldn't have put so much in. We could have brought some cargo with us. You see, I bet there's probably no procedures. There is. Oh, we got a GPS for 32. Let's see if I can get it to activate. Come on. There we go. Activate the approach. Switch us back over to nav. It's going to take us even further to the left. It's an 80 and 80. All right. Turn on the taxi light. We hit 5,000 feet. 15 miles out, so we should probably get down a little bit quicker now. Bring that back the thrust just a little bit more. Usually I end up getting down too quick. This time not quite quick enough, but we're also not going straight at it. We're going out to the side as well. And it's like literally like it showed it on the water. That doesn't quite look like it. I had, had it right on the point. Listen, that's, I don't know, and it comes out to here? I can't quite tell. Or 12 for Murray. So we slow down our descent, because we're going to have to stop at 3,000 feet or so anyway. That's 12 for Murray, not from the actual air. Lights are on. The icing is on too. I'm going to leave it on. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to. I'm wondering if that's it right there. Like I said, it's got water runways. And you saw the ATC. It does, in fact, have those. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit to 2x. I'm going to stop her at 3,000 feet. I think, I think that's it right there. I'll let it actually go to 2800. So we're going to be turning to it here in just a second. Actually, we're turning a little bit right now. Saw a flash. Hold our 
altitude, I'm actually going to head down the road. Start to say. There's a flash. I don't know if that was it or not. It's so bright, I think it actually makes it a little bit harder. Just to send it a few hundred feet a minute till we can actually get a visual on the runway. If I remember correctly, I looked at a picture and it, I believe that goes like along with the water. Right there? I don't know. Two away from Murray. Is that it right there? I can't really tell. I'm thinking that's it, because that's all I see that even resembles a runway. Send a little bit quicker yet. I'm trying to get the speed down a little bit. Down yet quicker. Taking me. I'm gonna turn off the autopilot. Because I was really thinking that's the runway, and all of a sudden this thing pulled me off. Like that could be the runway. I think the ENV is making it harder to see. The flaps. That's gotta be the runway to the right. Unless that's the water. Yeah, it's like just on a little strip of land. Go ahead and drop the gear. Come on. Alarm. Come the flaps. More flaps, I should say. I bet it looks even better when everything's not completely frozen. Alright, so we're at full flaps. Try and trim it out a little bit. Trim. Alright. Hilo Delta Yankee Tango traffic. Cessna Golf Tango Dolphin Sierra. Hilo is on final runway 32 to land. Trying to trim it. And then, of course, it's trimmed too much. It went from it's falling out of the sky to just about climbing. It says it's 3,500, no, maybe it's 3,000 feet. It said something about a threshold making it shorter to like 2,500 feet or so. It looks kind of odd. It's almost like reddish color. I'm not sure what that's about. We're still at 1,200 feet. Let's go over to the right a little bit more. It feels like there is some wind knocking us around. Just a little bit, help us slow down. So obviously the runway, I'm not sure why we was heading left. 
the you just need the GPS to get you in the area. Not straight there. We're getting down a little too quick there for a second. Get the thrust a little more. I get just a little more right. Bringing that thrust down. We ended up a little high. Not great, not horrible. All right, I'll take that. Oh, get over. Can't even get a taxi on the center line. Nice, I bet that looks awesome in the uh, spring and summer, summer and autumn when it's not everything's frozen over. I bet that water looks really cool. That, this is a really cool airport, being on just on the water, like on the strip of land like that, this is very cool. Alright, so everything did taxi down here. Park right over here. Right here. Yeah, right here. It's quicker. We don't need that fuel area. Stay away from the fuel area. Before we do that, I want to get dinged. Landing lights, some position lights. I believe that's position. That's nav. That's position. Pause my mic for a second. Cough. Yeah, just pull straight ahead. Nice and easy. Right here, park and brake. We can go ahead and cut the fuel Come down here to the switches. Pump the prop heat off. The propellers have stopped, so we'll go ahead and open the doors for them. the tanks and everything should be good yeah you see spill coin is still like half like we used half the tank I should have filled it up I guess I was thinking that Toronto was just a little bit longer and we didn't have that uh, that much fuel yeah it goes to 12 and we're at 6 we used like literally half <laughs> Quiet lady, I don't need you laughing at me. But we pro we didn't have as stiff winds because I didn't use Opus. I'm sure if Opus, we'd have had a lot higher winds. FS passengers, we'll go ahead in the flight. So we could have used that for luggage. We're not baggage. We're not going to make that much money. 555 nautical miles. Time airborne, 2 hours, 53 minutes, 26 seconds. Flight times, 3 hours, 6 minutes, 2 seconds. Time on the ground, 15 and a half minutes. Average speed is 192 knots. We climb uh, for 8 minutes and 3 seconds. Cruise time was 2 hours, 35 minutes and 48 seconds. Average cruise speed, 199 knots. Uh, descent time, 9.5 minutes. Landing speed was 82.94 knots. Landing touchdown coming down at 91.5 feet a minute. Kiss. Uh, landing pitch was 2.1 degrees. Landing weight, 75.57. We used 849 pounds of fuel. 49 on the climb, 773 on the cruise. cruise. Only using 297 an hour. It's pretty fuel efficient, man, especially compared to that caravan, too. And we used 26 pounds on the descent. Exceptional flight, 100% passengers, why they were required to keep their seatbelt. They didn't. I actually took that light off. As soon as we got there, I took it off and I put it on right as we um started our descent. So, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Ticket income, 2469. See, we lost cargo. Ah. Jeez, uh, 714 on the fuel, 7 airport tax, 106 on the insurance, uh, real income 1642 times 50 is 82,100, uh, and I've got 108 from the fleet, comes 190. 
that we should have made it because you could think we could basically double that had we had the same amount of uh, a cargo. Won't you get like a dollar a pound or something like that? I can't remember. So maybe not doubled it, but you know, a lot more. Uh, so the passengers thought we should be at 100%, so we increased 0.24% to 97.56. Got a perfect on our overall flight result. 374 pilot points. Very smooth landing, 50. Perfect flight, no problems. Satisfied passenger, 150. Landed at the schedule airport, 30. Long flight, 253 minutes without using time exposure, even though we really did. Without any problems, and with a satisfied passenger, 144. 50 for the beacon, because we don't have a beacon. We don't have the beacon. Very nice airport. I'm glad someone asked me to go to Duluth because we I would have never known this about this. Look how it's so close to the to the water. It's like just literally on a little strip of land. It's a nice small airport. I'm not sure where uh, the water runways are. I actually looked this place up on online too. They have a website and everything. A couple websites I think dedicated to them. It is a small, as you can see, small runway. There's a big, huge airport somewhere. Not huge, huge, but bigger. So I, can't, I think it might be an international airport, actually. Maybe not. I wonder if that house is actually there. And these roads. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt that very highly. And that road. Where's that road going to? And that one. And those houses. That is very cool, though. I really, really like that. I keep seeing this right here. I don't know what those are. It's almost like poles sticking up. It's been there forever since we were flying in. Very nice. Glad we flew here. And I'm not sure exactly where we're going next. Uh, so if you got any ideas, you can go ahead and hit me up. Although I will have already flown by the time I post this. This is probably makes four or five um, that are sitting here waiting to be posted now. I put so much stuff, other series and everything. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. I hope you all did enjoy it. And I will catch you guys on the next flight.